Hello, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for, for inviting me here. Um, we prepared a series of slides. Um, first of all, I want to, I just want to acknowledge, thank you so much uh, for uh, really making the effort and bringing the corporate focus on this sector. Um, so let, let us start with the why question. Uh, network, uh, now PTP stands for Network of Organizations Working for People with Disabilities. Um, why did we start that? So in 2008, um, you know, uh, I was chairing another initiative and we came across the sector of disabilities and it was horrifying to see that almost over 20 million people uh, in Pakistan uh, were disabled in one form or the other. And uh, what was horrifying really is 95% of them did not have access to uh, quality health and education. And Pakistan was not unique. There were many other developing countries, especially um, they had this problem and it was like out of sight, out of mind. I mean, these are boggling numbers. So we said we need to do something about it. And um, what we what we did not want to do was start an, another charity. Uh, we did a lot of surveys. A lot of people operate in their own nook and corners uh, due to personal tragedies, etc. And uh, it really was not having the combined impact uh, which we need to have to move them to move the needle. Therefore, we said let's create a platform, a network, which. Uh, which can, you know, as they say, the sum is greater than, uh, uh, than, than the parts. So how do we do a strategic uh, intervention to the sector where we can really punch above our weight? Um, so uh, the key, uh, our, uh, our main objectives was to really try and change the conversations, changing mindsets, uh, above all that this is not a charity model. It's about inspiring. It's about people with special abilities. Um, uh, it's like, you know, and the key learning in this, or I would say realization is um, people actually have special abilities. It is the societal barriers that make most of them disabled. It's like me wearing spectacles. If I remove them, I can see in a very blur fashion, I actually become disabled. So if I don't have these spectacles, I am disabled. So if society provides me with these spectacles, yeah, I become able. So it's as simple as that. So it's about the barriers that are there. And it's not out of ill faith. Uh, you know, um, uh, it's, I think it's a lot to do with ignorance. Um, our ethos is about social innovation. We literally use the Silicon Valley model um, because in, in the development sector, you have limited resources um, and uh, the challenge is over -repelling. So you need to bring in uh, innovation, social innovation, and that means risk-taking. People generally in the social sector are risk averse. Uh, we encourage our ethos is to do, to do some crazy stuff, take risk and fail. And that is the key to all our social um, program that you'll see, there is an innovative part in all of them. Um, and uh, and uh, that's why we've managed to punch above our weight. Um, also, it is about institution building. Uh, it's not a one person show. Uh, it is about professionalism and it's hardcore uh, corporate in terms of uh, accountability. Um, so while we are an NGO, uh, but we run like a hardcore corporate sector. If anything, I you know I joke that in my in my personal businesses I'm still a softy, but when it comes to social sector, we are hardcore, and because of that, we attract actually the best talent. And I think it's not just paying them reasonably well. We can't still compete with the with the with the with the corporate sector. But we actually, um, we find incredible talent because people come to fulfill the sense of purpose, sense of fulfillment, uh, doing something, you know, uh, larger than life and uh, empowering them as well. 
Uh, so, so, so it's with this org culture that we really do. Uh, all our programs are sustainable. Uh, we do not, we do not believe in firecrackers. Something like looks good can be fashionable. Um, you know, uh, looks nice. We do not go for it. We look at what, how will this pan out in the next five years' time? If it doesn't make sense, we do not do it just for the sake of doing it. Uh, impact again, it's hardcore impact. Uh, it's not about feel good or you know uh, earning brownie points. Uh, it's about hardcore impact, and we do measure ourselves and we hold ourselves accountable. And even with our partners, donors, fine, you know, um, we do engage and we do inform them. But internally, we we have a very very rigorous process to make sure that we are making meaningful impact. And last uh, but not the least is a holistic intervention. Uh, wherever, whatever program we do, whichever communities we go, we look at a holistic approach. Um, and that actually takes time. It's not as easy as one like to think. Uh, and above all, um, especially we in the corporate, we love to talk. Uh, here we have to listen uh, to the communities and hence uh, it's a bottom-up approach uh, which, we, which we need to take. Uh, and that is how you, we create our innovation. It's a collaborative approach. It's not that, you know, here we are Ivy League uh, kids coming in and uh, trying to make this difference. And here you folks, uh, you know, look at these solutions. No, it's always collaborative and it's actually bottom up. You have to listen. And it, and it is, I mean, you need to put your ego uh, temporarily in, uh, on the side and try, open your, your, your ears and you'd be amazed are the kind of solution we can then do th through collaboration. So next slide, please. So like I said, um, uh, you know, all our, uh, so we have these seven verticals, we call them pillars. Uh, these are the are tools through which we operate. Um, and there is a value proposition in each and every one of them. And I will be explaining each of these verticals as we move forward. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yeah. So we are we are all over the country. Uh, some we have our own centers that we run, uh, and some uh, we do through partnerships. Next slide, please. Okay. So our first vertical is Rehnumai. Uh It's about community outreach. Just like in the oil and gas sector, uh, you guys do, let's say, you know, geological surveys uh, before you do any drillings. Uh, we do community outreach. And it's about creating awareness uh, about uh, the issues, uh, uh, you know, addressing certain social taboos, um, uh, engaging the communities in a two-way listening to them, and then also registering them, uh, documenting them, uh, who are the people with disabilities in which household. So before we do the intervention, we understand the lay of the land, uh, the size of the issue. And so we can then create a center or whatever we want to create so we can scale it accordingly. Uh, next slide. Uh, it's about Shanakht. Shanakht means identity. So if you do not, if you, if you do not exist and the government records, you do not exist, period. So, um, Normally, there are about five or six government departments that are involved in it. To get the special ID registration, um, it's a four-month process. And I remember, still remember distinctly, one of the government department was on the second floor, and, um, and it did not have any elevator. So anyone on wheelchair can forget about it. So because that the registrations, the ID registration was negligible. So what we did was we brought Mountain to Moses. So we got all of these four or five government departments together under one roof. And we would, through our partners, keep these camps where we would uh, bring in um, uh, uh, you know, people with special, disabil uh, special abilities, disabilities into these camp camps. And you would, uh, I know some of us find hard to believe, but actually politicians are, have a heart and they actually do some good stuff as well. Um, and uh, you'd be surprised, um, you know, at the kind of um, 
cooperation we got from the governments, from the local government, provincial, as well as from the federal government. NADRA, which is a national ID uh, thing, they, they developed special vans. We helped them to develop with slides so uh, wheelchair, people with wheelchair can actually go in there. And, um, and so we've been running this camps about uh, now about 12 years uh, all over the country. Uh, and uh, incredible success. We've done tens of thousands of, uh, of uh, ID registration uh, because if you, once when you get your ID, you can be eligible for certain stipends which government gives. Again, that is not, doesn't happen out of default. Uh, we have to, you know, work with them to make sure that they, that they, uh, that they get that. They get discounts during travels. We need to bring awareness about that. Um, and also quotas from job quotas. So we have lobbied with governments, federal as well as provincial, to give special quotas. So they are eligible for these quotas. Next slide, please. Next slide is FALA. Now, uh, FALA means really it's about, uh, for us, it's really about mobility. Uh, the reason why these people cannot have access to health and education is because of mobility. If you can't get out of your house or if there's no one to help you, uh, you cannot access these services even if they are available. So, um, so what we do is that we, we provide uh, chairs, wheelchairs, and wheelchairs, the local quality was really pathetic. So we import these chairs and they're sturdy. We've had since five, six years, they're still working very well. They are uh, quite suitable to arduous terrains and they work out very well. Um, we white cane, of course, hearing aids, of course, and also in all our training centers, we provide um, uh, transportation. Uh, that actually is a major part of our, um, of our expenses in running these centers, be the schools or the training center, uh, is transportation. Without that, it just does not work. So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so this is our uh, Fala. Next slide, please. Talim, Talim. So we have schools, um, and um, we have experimented uh, with uh, various models. One which I, which is closest to my heart, is uh, it's early childhood uh, schools. We've done still pilot projects last three, four years, where we get children and their, you know, three, four year, five year old kids. Uh, with uh, physical disability, hearing impairments, uh, visual, this thing, and also just people with no disability as such, and put all of them in classrooms, right? These are, these are, these are kids, four, five-year-old kids, and we just teach them. And it is magic. It's magic how they learn to communicate intuitively amongst themselves. I do not think some model of this has been done anywhere in the world and uh, the success has been incredible. Um, and so far as this is a cutting edge technology innovation, um, it works very well. We know we need to do very you know, limited intervention and the children, the way they, they evolve, uh, ECT we know is you know, where your neural development happens till the age of three uh, in the early stages. So, so it's really, it's really incredible, and it's we would like to scale it up. We are scaling, scaling it up, but gradually. <laughs> Another we do for uh, schools is we've done, uh, we've worked with governments in the past. Ninety-eight schools we made the mainstream schools inclusive, so people with mild disabilities can be mainstream. It's absolutely impossible to put all these children in special schools. It's and it's actually it's nonsense. Uh, when you talk about inclusivity, it, it has to be, we need to mainstream uh, children with mild disabilities, otherwise you'll be creating these exclusive schools. So, uh, so, uh, so we work with some of the schools and the government, uh, how to end that again has a lot of resistance on a lot of, uh, um, you know, um, areas. Uh, then uh, we run ourselves special schools and we we cater to all forms of disabilities in our, in our, in our schools, and uh, they work incredibly well, and they're all under one roof. So people with disability, children with disab different disabilities get a chance outside the classroom to interact with each other. Uh, next. Honor is about skill development. We run these vocational training centers. 
you can see in the picture one of the graduation ceremonies and trust me it's it's just it's just incredible you you really have to be there to see uh, the joy in people's um, eyes um, and especially of their parents uh, in our graduation uh, we run women women specific programs also our success rate is about 60% uh, which actually is remarkable. Um, between you and me, I would have been happy at 30%. So we really, really, and the reason is because we take a hardcore uh, we, uh, market approach. We work very closely with the corporate sectors. We understand what the needs are, what the job requirements are, what the skills sets are needed. And then we look at what are the things we do. So we provide, let's say, JAWS software, we do the skill trainings. There are a lot of people who lag in certain other skills, English skills, for example. So we have supplementary classes to make sure that they come at par. So, and we have a HR department that sifts through the candidates, creates them, and that's how we place them within our vocation and then subsequently even in job placements. So there's a whole tracking um, um, uh, which we do um, and uh, one of the initiatives we did was with the Central Bank, the State Bank of Pakistan. We, it took us about seven years to devise policy of the Central Bank where banks are required to not only employ people with disabilities, but open their branches that are disabled friendly. And there's a whole science to this, which we have evolved over a decade. And not only the presidents of the bank, but the board is responsible so, this, uh, so the state bank as a regulator holds their neck every six months when the auditors come in to, to make them accountable. And we have regular meetings with them. So we devise these policies. And so, you know, and it's not just the blue collar, it's the white collar jobs as well, um, uh, which we do. Uh, so this is skill development program, which we do. Next slide, please. Okay, Hon um, Rosgaard. Uh, Rosgar again is about uh, this is where uh, the rubber meets the road. Uh, this is where the culmination starts to happen. It's about placing them in jobs, meaningful jobs. Uh, the first time we did that was I called up some CEO friends. Um, this was about 12 years ago. Uh, guys, you know, we have some of these training centers. Please keep people. And they said, yeah, sure, no problem. And then we tracked them. 80% of them left the jobs within the first three months time. And we said, what the hell is going on here? And, um, and so we, we understood uh, that, uh, you know, the disability is in the corporate sector as well. So hence we have this whole uh, four verticals. Um, the B, we work with the, with the top corporate companies and um, reviewing their HR policies. We collaborate with the Architecture Association of Pakistan. We go into their, uh, the companies and onto their factory floors, uh, making sure that they are, the, the, the premises are physically accessible. Uh, we do staff sensitization. Uh, this point, I cannot overemphasize. Um, the real barriers are in our minds. Um, I was horrified at some of the early sessions, the kind of misperceptions people had about people with disabilities. Um, and it's not just the laborer on the, on the factory floor, but also in some executives. Um, and so the staff sensitization uh, starts from the CEO down to the factory floor. Uh, we make sure uh, you know, everyone is involved and um, and it and it works very well. So we have sensitization, and then after this, we actually go for job placements. Uh, we uh, we we like then the uh, then they go through the interview process. We give them the candidates, and we work very closely uh, with uh, the uh, with uh, the HR department uh, uh, to make sure that they get meaningful jobs because um, in the early years. We would have people would just give them jobs and just make them sit in a corner uh, doing nothing, literally, right? And um, what we don't realize is a lot of, most of these people come, have gone through traumatic experiences in their lives. And the last thing they want is to be dumped in a bloody corner and uh, seen as a charity case. Uh, so we, uh, it enrages us. And because of that, we do, we make sure 
uh, you know, they all have meaningful, purposeful lives um, in their in their like jobs. And you know, giving jobs, um, it's nice of of course from an economic point of view, but you know, I tell you, it's about we have to see to believe the kind of impact it has not only in the family, um, but also in the entire neighborhood. It's like a celebration. You know, um, being um, someone who they would look down to as a liability, becoming a celebration in the entire neighborhood of getting a job. Um, then uh, another vertical is Khud uh, This is about self, self, self-employment. Uh, self-employment, um, we do handicrafts, um, we design, we sell them online. All of this is made by people with disabilities. Uh, we we create food carts. We give it to them to run their own business. Uh, we do stitching uh, machines. We train them and then give them stitching machines for them to uh, have their own stitching centers. We have rickshaws. These are handheld rickshaws um, that can be operated. Uh, Pakistan still, unfortunately, has polio issues. So a lot of the drivers are polio. Uh, we run them. And just to give you an idea, it took us almost two years how to convert rickshaws from the foot pedal to being a handheld. And there were so many uh, issues with it. It was just incredible. And what we finally managed, and then we had licensing issues because some law, which was maybe about uh, from the biblical ages, uh, that did not allow people with either hearing impairment or physical disabilities to, uh, uh, to, to drive a vehicle. And to change the law took us about almost five years. There, at the end, of, we said the hell with it, and we just went ahead and did it. Um, so, um, I want to uh, conclude um, that you know, um, like I said, we take a very uh, uh, you know um, a corporate type of an approach. Um, there is a, a value proposition in all in each and everything we do. So, for example, with the corporate sector. If I call a CEO friend and I say, guys, you know, please do this, they might do that, or we're looking for some CSR fund, or we're looking for some, you know, donations, personal, um, he or she would do it once, twice, third time, they say, okay, sure, we'll look at it, right? Uh, so we really don't go for the charity model. We provide hardcore value proposition. In the corporate sector, it's about changing the organization culture. As we say, um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And, um, I, and you know, it's, one really has to experience the kind of corporate culture uh, it, it creates by having an inclusive environment. And it's not just feel good kind of a thing, you know, ticking the box of your CSR uh, or just a corporate uh, HR, uh, you know, PR uh, uh, thing. It has solid value. And I promise uh, companies that have gone through, you can speak to them. Um, there is solid value proposition, be it um, creating a more empathetic employees, uh, changing a diverse perspective, bringing a wide uh, diverse perspective. And remember, a lot of these people, be it visually impaired, have graduated. Uh, they have struggled, right? They've gone through a lot of hardship and they've come and then and they've come on the other side of, uh, of the aisle. Um, and as Rumi would say that, you know, uh, the wound is where the light enters you. So they've gone through it and what they have is grit, right? These guys are survivors. Um, and we want, we would love to have in our companies, people who are survivors. You punch them, they'll get up and give you two punch in the face as well. Um, we need such people having, you know, positive tension in the companies. Uh, people who would have different perspective. Um, and so it really, really um, uh, um, helped to have this, um, this kind of a uh, diverse uh, perspective. And it's also about team. Uh, teamwork, again, is um, something, um, you know, it's not just sitting together, but it's about, you know, uh, taking care of each other. So uh, with that, I'm going to conclude with a video that gives us a brief of now PDP and then open to Q&A. Thank you very much. Mujhe naalo Shahzadiya, aur magot Jog Sharif Bhatore ji rahan wariya hai. 
साल ब हज़ार दह की बोर्ड को एक हादसे में मुझो पेर जया थी वो हो अस गरीब जरूर हुआ पर जिंदगी को बेजार न हुआ इन हादसे को ढी बेजार और ना खुश रही हुयम एक दी मुझे घरवारे के मोरड़े मरकज की खबर पई तो इतने मुफ्त में व्हील चेयर पे विराइजन उन वही और मुझे नालो भी दाखिल करा तो अस भी खबर पई तो इतने सिलाई भी सेखारन था नंडे लायक हुई सिलाई सीखने जो ढो शौक हो हुनर सीख और इन हुनर के करें घरवार खुशगवार और सुकून वाली जिंदगी थी गुजारी Thank you, Amin, for a very um, inspiring sharing and um, the video, um, essentially summing up um, how great your organization is and uh, its contribution to to Pakistan. And uh, it's a it's a really good tie-in with how um, eventually you would always find um, employment or job placement for for these individuals. Now we just have two questions from the audience. Um, one is um, how do you measure the positive impact to your people one is qualitative and one is quantitative uh, quantitative is actually very easy um you look at the jobs you look at the retentions etc and the other but the most important is qualitative you uh, i mean personally i've seen from unilever i mean you know um, i would speak to the to the lady who runs the hr she said you know what we make sure even uh, on our offsite conferences we do include people with disabilities uh because it just changes the complete atmosphere someone in wheelchair going on a conference on some mountainous resort and everyone is chipping in to making sure that the person is kind of you know looked after it just changes the whole dynamic uh, number one number two uh we've had um, i mean th- there are countless stories uh, we would hear and uh, again uh, the grit i spoke about uh it's a very you would be surprised that the different perspective you get in at one of the banks i was speaking to the president they have included that individual in the strategy group all right um because uh, they bring in a very very different perspective and so they are actually um you know changing the whole strategy or not changing but out to tweaking their strategy um uh, because of that a very different perspective that they bring so yeah so we do do a tracking we have a, a survey uh, of the employer as well as the employee their the from retention levels to job satisfaction etc and so far we have uh, been very successful uh, but uh, like i mentioned we actually take a very hard nose um, attitude so in our in our in our rickshaw project where uh, people with polio we would uh, we would uh, we would give them jobs uh, to run these and it was on a profit sharing basis but i made sure that we we actually fired some of the uh, some of these uh, drivers as well so people understand we are not running a charity uh, people who uh, did not come to did not from an ethical point of view um, you know we caught some people and we even fuel etc minor thing but we actually fired them uh so to just to send the message across thank you i mean and uh, just sort of a follow up to to the question regarding tracking and um how you measure uh the success of um the employment um is there a what what is uh, the biggest challenge um to work with with such a a stigmatic topic um how did their families react was there a visible change after your your organization stepped in oh so the family as far as uh, people with disabilities uh, I, like i said it was dramatic i mean to say i cannot over exaggerate uh, the kind of um, you know impact it had um you know it, and i mean literally it's at a family level you have to i come from a corporate sector so on a balance sheet either you have an asset or a liability all of them are on the liability side of the balance sheet and within a span of 6 months you convert an liability into an asset right and it's not just the family it's not just um you know uh, the corporate sector it's the entire country's gdp 
um, if we bring these people with disabilities um, um, to, from liability to an asset, with and, and, and in a lot of cases, actually with the minimum intervention, you're looking at six months and uh, it's chump change when you look at. So you can actually move the needle as far as the GDP of an entire nation is concerned. Uh, the, and like I said, all our programs are actually scalable. Uh, we do not operate in nooks and corners. These are tried and tested um, uh, business models, I would say, uh, with measurable outcomes and scalable. Thank you so much, Amin, and um, thank you for, for answering the questions of the audience. And they are truly inspired with the difference that now PDP is making. So uh, we hope to see you Thank again you. and um, invite you in future sessions. So, but Thank before you. Uh, you leave and uh, we, before we go to the next speaker, we'll take a quick break um, and uh, listen to uh, a song um, played by one of our local um, groups here in, in Manila and, uh, and the group's called uh, Music and Chevron. So. Um, during the break, while you're doing your thing, we'll listen to music and then we'll proceed to our next speaker. Thank All you. Right. Thank you very much. God bless. Bye-bye. Thank you.